We'll now look at graphs and graph models. So a graph, which we'll denote by G, consists of a non-empty set of vertices V and a set of edges E. So we have to have some vertices. We have to have at least one. However, our edges can't actually be an empty set. Each edge has either one or two vertices associated with it, which are the endpoints. A graph with a finite number of vertices is a finite graph, and a graph with an infinite number of vertices is an infinite graph. So we're going to do an example where we consider a small airline that flies between the capital cities of all the New England states. Hartford, Connecticut, Augusta, Maine, Boston, Mass, Connect Concord, New Hampshire, Providence, Rhode Island, and Montpelier, Vermont. So we'll suppose this airline has direct flights as follows. So these are the six places that this airline flies. And so we can actually do this with a, a graph. So for example, P for Portland, A for Augusta, H for Hartford, B for Boston, C for Concord, Concord and M for Mont Montplier. And we can see our different flights that we had. So this is actually called a simple graph. We have undirected edges. Our edges do not have arrows on them. We don't allow for multiple edges, and there are no loops. However, there may be reasons to consider multiple edges. For instance, what if there's three different flights between Boston and Hartford in a day? So we can do this. We can have multiple loops in a graph. And this is called a multigraph. So our edges are still undirected. We allow multiple edges, but we still do not allow loops. However, let's suppose these planes want to do a test flight just around the airport every morning, and they do this at Augusta and Hartford. Then we can add in these loops, just saying they get up, fly around a second, and come back down, just to kind of do a test run. And this is a pseudograph. We still have undirected edges, multiple edges are allowed, and we allow loops. So these are the three types of undirected graphs. We also will have directed graphs. For instance, I know that there is a flight between Augusta and Hartford, but which way does it go? Does it start at Augusta and land at Hartford, or does it go the other way around? So we can add in arrows to indicate directions of these particular flights. And this is a simple directed graph. We have directed edges. We do not allow multiple edges or loops. And when I say we do not allow multiple edges, we do still allow this, since these two edges go in opposite directions. However, we would not allow an additional arrow here moving in this direction, since that would account for two. I can also add in loops and add in these multi-edges, and I get a directed multi-graph. So this one has directed edges, we allow multiple edges, and we allow loops. And there is one last type of graph, which will look like this. So this has a combination of directed and undirected arrows. So when we see an undirected arrow, basically this means there's an arrow going from Portland to Augusta, and going from Augusta to Portland. It allows us to take these uh, double edges and collapse them down into one. For instance here, this indicates there's a flight from Boston to Hartford and from Hartford to Boston. The additional directed edge tells us there's a second flight from Hartford to Boston. There's a flight from Boston to Concord and from Concord to Boston, etc. And this is called a mixed graph because it has both directed and undirected edges. We allow multiple edges and loops. And we can see graphs everywhere. So for example, I can form a graph where every vertex represents a person on social media. And then we'll attach an egg between two people if they're friends. A social media site like Facebook would form a simple graph since if you're somebody's friends, they are also your friend. So we don't need arrows. 
In addition, there's no loops because you cannot friend yourself, and there's no need for double edges. Something like Twitter would be a simple directed graph, since I can follow you, but that doesn't mean that you have to follow me. So we would allow these directed graphs here. We also have a Wikipedia graph. So if we let every Wikipedia site represent a vertex, we'll have an edge between sites A and B if site A has a link to site B. And this is going to be a directed graph. So for example, this is a very small portion of the Wikipedia graph. This looks at the page of network theory, which would link to all of these pages you see here, because all of these, if you go to the Wikipedia page of network theory, have blue links. And then in addition, we would have to look at each one of these. This would definitely allow for backtracking edges. However, there would be no circular edges, no loops in this graph. And we can form these graphs in pretty much any scientific field that we want. Uh, pretty much any type of field that you want to look into, we can find some kind of graph that can model that area.